Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this updated video on the tropics. And in this video, we will be taking a look at these two systems across the North Atlantic Basin. We have Tropical Depression Number 12, as well as uh, Invest 91L, and that is about to cross into the Caribbean, and it is a threat to portions of the southeastern region. And so before I go into details, please do subscribe if you haven't done so already, and tap the notification bell so that you don't miss an important update on the tropics and to show your support for the channel you can leave a like on this video okay and so let us go ahead and get into what's going on across the tropics back to infrared satellite imagery here we are seeing that there is a 91L not looking very organized but it is getting itself together and then there is tropical depression number 12 so let's look at depression 12 first let's go on to the uh, cone forecast for the system here and we're seeing that the National Hurricane Center is not expecting that this is going to be intensifying into a tropical storm but it should dissipate maybe before the end of this week so our uh, conditions are not conducive enough out there to, to enable this to intensify much more and so uh, it isn't likely that this will become a named storm and as of right now the next name on the list is julia and it looks as though 91l will be making that claim so let's go on to the disturbance now and we're seeing that on the five day graphical tropical weather outlook it is given a high 80 percent chance of development as of the 2 a.m update and once the favorable conditions are going to be persistent for the system to develop and intensify then this chance is eventually going to increase to 90 until we have a closed center of circulation as well as those uh, tropical cyclone force winds for this to be classified as a tropical cyclone. However, even though it is not a tropical cyclone at the moment, it is still a threat to portions of the southeastern Caribbean. And so uh, let's take a closer look at it on satellite and we're seeing here that the system is not very organized as I said earlier, but it is producing quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity. And the conditions should be more conducive as the system heads into the southeastern Caribbean Sea. So uh, that favorable wind shear, a very moist environment, as well as those very warm ocean waters will enable intensification. The only thing I see being a potential issue for this is the land interaction. If it is too close to land, uh, that can help to inhibit significant development of the system. But if it remains over water for the most part, then we could definitely see some intensification. And I really think that this is our next a uh, tropical cyclone that we're looking at here all right and going to what the models are expecting now so looking at the model intensity guidance here we have quite a few models available and a uh, majority are expecting that this will become a tropical storm and some of them are expecting a hurricane some showing a major hurricane and to be honest i do not think that this is impossible but once it is in that very favorable region no land interaction those very warm waters uh, the conducive wind shear as well as a lot of moisture then I have no doubts that this thing here could rapidly intensify and as a matter of fact seeing the possible track of it heading towards Central America really brings me back to 2020 with Hurricane Iota so uh, let's hope that this is not going to be a similar outcome with the system here because the long term is very uncertain for it there can be a lot of changes but what is sure right now is that the Lesser Antilles uh, specifically the Windward Island are being impacted by this and will continue to be impacted as we head throughout today and uh, this is going to be entering the southeastern Caribbean where we could see some further intensification as time goes by. And so then now in terms of uh, conditions out there for the wind shear, as I said, uh, the shear should be more conducive. That red indicates those strong upper level winds. And that is what tropical cyclones hate because that really helps to displace activity and prevent the system from growing and intensifying. However, uh, we're seeing those greens across the Caribbean and that green means there is conducive wind shear, meaning that no strong upper level winds. Things are quite calm up there and that will enable the system to really get itself together with little to no interference and then in terms of the ocean heat content things are just crazy in the caribbean the ocean heat content is off the charts as we're seeing for sections of the central and western caribbean where we're seeing those reds and oranges so that is indicating very deep warm water 
and this is just going to be helping to fuel the system as it makes its way across the region here but it is not expected to move into the northwestern caribbean as of now as i said changes are possible when it comes on to the long term there is no certainty so we just have to keep watching the system as time goes by and other areas for the long term that should be keeping eyes on this is is really central america and other areas such as uh, northern venezuela and probably northern colombia as well will be impacted by this including the abc islands uh, as we head into the latter part of this week but central america you should definitely be on watch because if we're going to be having the system intensifying it's likely that the area specifically nicaragua will be impacted uh the hardest by the system if it goes with what is currently expected but of course as i said there is no guarantee and there can be changes in the future and you might be in jamaica wondering if we're going to be impacted by this there is a chance of that happening again there can be changes with the expected track of it and also if we're talking about a system that is uh quite organized those other bands can still be a problem for us but of course uh, that's for the long term and there is no guarantee of that happening and what about the intensity of the operational models what about the euro gfs and icons so let's look at those right now and we're starting out with gfs so if you're not clear on this map it is showing the isobars which are the black lines and the colors indicate the precipitation rates and so uh, when we see those isobars being in a circular manner with a pressure of at least 10 13 millibars we're looking at a low pressure system and to the more compact we see those isobars that is indicating a steeper gradient which means that uh, there is a stronger system there so this is for uh, the end of this week going to Thursday Friday we see the system uh, trying to get itself together and then by uh, Sunday we see it heading to the south of Jamaica where it is intensifying even more and headed to Central America so uh, GFS is expecting that this is going to be making its way in the northwestern Caribbean and affecting the Yucatan and Belize uh, and this is quite interesting here so uh, GFS not expecting the system to be as south as it was yesterday so uh, this is some change that we definitely have to pay attention to in terms of the euro model euro is expecting that the system will start to get itself together as it heads towards Nicaragua uh, not showing a very strong system nothing near as strong as the GFS uh, more than likely a tropical storm being expected to make landfall in Nicaragua as they're going to be heading into the early part of next week and then as for the icon model now icon is expecting that we're going to be having gradual development of the system as well we see crossing the abc islands by friday and then by saturday going to sunday uh we see that the system is intensifying on its way to nicaragua so we're seeing something a little bit similar between icon and euro uh in terms of them expecting that the system is going to be making its way mostly towards the west and eventually making landfall in Nicaragua. But as I said, guys, there can be a lot of changes. And there have been a lot of changes. I mean, with the recently formed cyclones such as Hurricane Ian, uh, the initial tracks for the long term were not the outcome uh, in terms of some of the models. And so we just have to keep watching the system. But of course, I'm going to be keeping you guys updated on what's happening out there. But for now, if you're in the Windward Islands, the ABC Islands, Northern Venezuela, and even portions of Northern Guyana, are being impacted right now with a lot of uh, shower and thunderstorm activity so guys please stay safe and do not take any unnecessary risks and of course i'm going to keep you updated as time goes by and that is it for now and if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments or you can also share your thoughts there and remember to always be weatherwise.